Buddha says that physical intercourse is not as dangerous as mental intercourse because, in physical intercourse, only some of the body's energy is expended, which is replenished, but mental intercourse continues throughout our lives, constantly depleting our energy. Anyone who keeps their thoughts focused on past intercourse or future possibilities spends a significant part of their energy. If a person can come out of their thoughts and enjoy the present moment, they can save the energy of their mental lust. A large part of humanity is not troubled by intercourse. They are stressed by the thoughts of intercourse. Most of the time, their minds are filled with lustful thoughts, which depletes a significant part of their energy. If they had engaged in physical intercourse, their physical energy would have been expended for a few moments and then replenished, but mental intercourse continues, constantly depleting their energy. So, what method did Buddha suggest to come out of this mental intercourse and lustful thoughts? Buddha says that as long as we fight with something, our entire focus remains on it. But once we accept it, our focus shifts away from it because it no longer holds any interest for us and our mind is no longer entangled in it. Therefore, our mind becomes free from it. We spend most of our time thinking about how to get rid of lustful thoughts, searching for various solutions, but in the end, nothing is achieved. Those thoughts continue to hold our minds in captivity because our minds are fighting against them, looking for solutions to escape. We have never fully accepted that we are lustful beings. We can't even say it to ourselves. If we could, our mind and focus would shift to another center. Interestingly, whatever we try to avoid, we start thinking about it, and the more we think about it, the deeper it gets rooted in our minds. Most of the time, our mind is focused on finding solutions to get rid of those thoughts, so our attention remains centered on the same point. If we accept our nature, our focus will naturally shift to another center. People try various methods to eliminate their lust, trying to get rid of those thoughts. Some take vows, become celibate, or eat only as much as necessary to survive, thinking that food gives them energy, which leads to lust. So, they try to keep their body's energy just enough to stay alive, fasting from time to time. But the funny thing is, that the day they break their fast, or eat a full meal, the energy returns, and the thoughts take over their minds again. Similarly, some people completely distance themselves from women, but the day they come into contact with women, their lust awakens again. Whether you go to high mountains where humanity is rare, the day you return to the world, you will find that your lust has increased even more. Therefore, if no solution is found, this lust and its thoughts will continue to trouble us throughout our lives. I will try to explain the solution through a story. The story is short, but can answer all your questions. In ancient Greece, there was a community where there was no discrimination between boys and girls. Boys and girls could be friends, just like two boys could be friends, and there was no difference between them. They could meet and talk, just like two boys would, and the entire village would sleep together under one roof. There was no problem with this, and the youth of the village had no knowledge of lustful thoughts, because those thoughts never came to them. But after some time, some Christian priests arrived and started preaching to the people, saying that they were uneducated and didn't know that this was a sin. They said boys and girls should always be separate, and too much freedom could corrupt a person. New rules were made, and according to these rules, boys and girls could no longer be friends like two boys, and the entire village could no longer sleep together under one roof. This started the corruption of the youth of the village, until now, they had no knowledge of lust, but as soon as the distance was created between boys and girls, that distance began to attract them to each other. Remember, as long as there is no distance between two people, there is no attraction or pull towards each other. But as soon as you create a distance, an attraction or pull is naturally created. Now, the youth of the village began to think about each other, engaging in mental intercourse rather than physical intercourse, and this became the biggest reason for the community's downfall. There is no fault in physical intercourse. It is natural, given by nature, and it doesn't deplete our energy as much as mental energy does. The biggest reason for the growth of mental energy is the distance between young men and women. 
Whenever you cannot talk to a woman, or a woman cannot talk to a man, they cannot mingle with each other. Their mental thoughts become centered on each other. They are not talking, but in their minds, they are having conversations with each other. Therefore, if any young man is troubled by mental lust, always thinking about other women, he should consider taking a step forward and try to talk to those women. As he starts talking to them, he will find that the lustful thoughts that were weighing heavily on his mind are gradually diminishing, and at one point he will realize that the thoughts of having intercourse with that woman have completely disappeared from his mind. First and foremost, do not fight with your lust. Accept it. Accept and acknowledge that you are lustful, that your thoughts are filled with lust, and you don't need to fight it. Just accept it. And when you do, your attention will naturally shift to other centers. After that, do not hesitate to talk to a woman. Talk to her naturally as two people would. The human mind is so fickle and uncontrollable that even if it sees an animal engaging in intercourse, it fills with lustful thoughts. Such a fickle and lustful mind is created because you cannot accept your lust. You want to avoid it, to end it. Have you ever noticed that whatever you accept, your attention naturally shifts away from it? For example, if you love a woman, your attention remains centered on her, but once you marry her, you accept her, and the love vanishes. Similarly, if you see a car on the road, your attention goes to it repeatedly, but once you buy the car, accept it, your attention no longer remains on it. Learn to accept even your worst habits. Whatever habit you want to change, instead of fighting it, learn to accept it. When you accept it, your attention naturally shifts away from it. People ask how to save themselves from the overwhelming lust around us today when we see lustful scenes whenever we use our phones or go out. The question of saving oneself does not arise because those who are asking this are promoting their lust. You see the scenes and move on. What is the purpose of avoiding it? You did not take that path to see it. It came on the way by itself and will leave by itself. But if you start avoiding it, you give it a place in your mind and gradually it establishes its empire in your mind. Until your mind experiences a higher pleasure than lust or intercourse, until it tastes that, it will not see anything greater than lust or intercourse. But the day you taste that supreme bliss through meditation, you will realize what you need to achieve in life because there is no greater joy than supreme bliss. So, through meditation, taste that supreme bliss once, and once you do, your focus will naturally shift towards achieving that supreme bliss. After that, you won't have to fight your thoughts because you will have understood that there is a greater joy in the world than lust or intercourse. Thank you for joining me on this journey of embracing simplicity and finding the true essence of life. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more thought-provoking content and please share to one person you love the most. In last, I just want you to say, climb higher, aim higher, with a rise aspire.